So hi everyone. The topic for today is morphological image processing and this topic is something quite different. I won't say different but it is something quite interesting and we use them in many 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 practical applications like you call it object detection right or say you are working on a project like uh, say there is a seminar or there is any webinar happening and there is like there are live audience so what you make is that uh, you're making an application or a software in which what you do is that there are so many people you identify from the facial expressions that how are they liking the uh, webinar or they dislike the webinar right so many many applications can be thought of like this i'll be telling you the applications as well as we move uh, further so let's just get started with that what basically morphological image processing means so first of all if i have this term which is morphology right so it's definitely coming from the term morphology if i say morphology it means form right a form of something so throughout the chapter we'll be seeing that whatever operations we do they basically focus on two things number one shape and number two structure of any object right so the shape of the object we are focusing and the structure of the object we are focusing now these terms will make sense to you as we move further right so what why are we having this morphological image processing like we had image restoration reason being that definitely my image may get degraded and later on i have to restore it so why is uh, morphological image processing into consideration now see the thing is that the identification of certain objects within the image can be a difficult task now how it can be a difficult task like you have this image right so this image is nothing but you you are not able to know that what this image is right so if i just say that okay pause the video and think of what this image can be so you will think that uh, like we don't know but these images this can be an enemy tank in infrared image it can be even an asteroid in a space photograph or it can be any suspected tumor in a medical x-ray now these three examples which i gave right which is either you're having an infrared image or you are having a space photograph or you are having a medical x-ray so in all these things what we see is that we're not able to see properly so if you're not able to see properly how will we recognize that what this object is we can recognize it by analyzing its shape and structure and after we have the shape and structure we can have some template that is a tentative idea as of now i'm giving right uh, like we'll we'll proceed and we'll see how the things work but as of now what we think is that we can have a template for the shape and structure for the image also we'll extract out the shape and structure and we'll try to match and we'll see that what basically happens so now you will think that is it a coincidence this, that this is a binary image or is it that morphological operations are performed on binary images see maximum of uh, the morphological operations happen on binary images right like if i say 90 percent happens right because this concept we generally don't study in grayscale surely you can apply this in grayscale as well but we preferably do it in binary because in binary it gives better results and almost all the morphological image processing the study material or whatever the algorithms you will be finding they are on the binary images right so what is the benefit of converting it into binary so if you have any rgb we say that okay for morphological operations convert it into binary or you have a gray scale we again say that okay convert it into binary reason being that in binary what happens is that your pixels are restricted to either one or zero zero is black one is white so when your pixels are just restricted to two values it offers you more things you can do with your images correct so here this is a binary uh, so now let me give you an, another example of morphological processing so on the left hand side you see an original image which is a fingerprint right so whenever there is uh, like supposedly you are uh, developing some application in which you are doing some identification of fingerprints right or definitely fingerprint system can be a part of other systems as well but as of now i'm saying that okay there is some application which is using the fingerprints 
what happens is that you take into consideration the original fingerprint then there is some database it doesn't we generally think that okay through that database the fingerprint will be matched original fingerprint will be matched but no this is not what we generally do right what happens is that there are certain algorithms which will convert your original fingerprint to the skeletonized fingerprint so what happens in skeletonization skeletonization is also one of the morphological process uh, or you can say morphological image processing technique this is not what i'll be taking through in this lecture series but just to make you you know familiar i'm just telling you what is skeletonization but in your series i'll be covering erosion dilation opening closing and chain course these five things you'll be covering right so so don't worry about that so what happens is that we try to reduce the redundant data whatever is the redundant data we remove it after removal we get something like this now you can see that these are almost one pixel wide almost right so now this is matched with the database now it is seen that this gives the better results and definitely if you just think of this the processing will be more like you have to match so many pixels then but here when your pixels are reduced now it's a better matching and a faster matching which happens so this is also one of the morphological operations that we perform what happens is that whenever you see some morphological operation occurring you'll notice that every pixel in the background it is white and every pixel in the foreground or which i say as object is black correct so you will think that what like why is it so see there are two reasons why it can be possible the first reason is that generally what happens i'll be telling you in some minute in a minute that we can perform the morphological operations after segmentation or before image segmentation right that totally depends upon the application i am using but say if i am performing it post segmentation which means after segmentation so what we do in segmentation in segmentation what we do is that we do thresholding so thresholding basically means that supposedly if you have a grayscale image of 0 to 255 right so i keep a threshold point say i keep it as 128 right which is a bit middle or i can also keep it as 200 depending upon what my requirement is right but that will be covering in image segmentation not as of now so whatever will be lesser than threshold i generally convert it into zero and whatever is greater than or equal to i convert it into one so now my grayscale is totally converted into binary so that can be one reason that this happens the second reason is that whenever you are going to do this morphological operations you definitely require something like this right so here you can see that the background is white and front is black right so your pixel in the background is to be white while the pixels in the object is to be black now we can also do the opposite thing right but it again comes down to your application but generally this is a convention we use like okay here if you see right the background is black the foreground is white so it's not a fixed thing which you do it is totally up to you your application how you are making a database but why we prefer that this should be black and like the background should be white reason being processing it it all comes down to processing it all comes down to making the things efficient and all that stuff right so when we do this now in in morphological processing what we basically do is that the pixels are added or removed from the images the structure and the shape of the objects are analyzed so that they can be identified so how the pixels are added or removed you would definitely know as we proceed so one thing uh, we need to know is that the image uh morphological image processing and the image segmentation these are two overlapping areas why because morphological image processing is either used before or after image segmentation so if you are performing it before it will be called pre-processing and if you apply it after it will be called post-processing so in pre-processing what we do is that we take the image segmentation uh, like whatever is going to be the input of image segmentation that will be the output of 
morphological image processing right so the output of mip will go to the input of image segmentation that is a pre-processing we do for the post-processing what we do is that whatever will be the output of the image segmentation phase will be the input of mip so generally post-processing is done in maximum of the applications reason being just see this image this is what you did after segmentation so the fingerprint definitely these are unwanting things now these can be due to any reason maybe some dust particles or anything right so these are nothing but the imperfections so if i want to remove these imperfections right i have to give it a certain form i have to give it a certain structure so we do mip so this is the image after segmentation and after morphological processing so we generally do this while we do morphological image and like and i also said that post processing is mostly there so that whatever is my image it should be removed from all the imperfections it has right now there is one other alternative you can do right which is not a part of mip this is called region props now uh, one more thing I just wanted to say that if you are just I mean, uh, thinking that what is this study material or I, uh, like is this some source or not these are this is the study material which I made myself and if you want uh, to access this uh, study material you can simply uh, email at concepts in depth and easy at the rate of gmail.com so if you want this material totally free just drop an email and uh, i'll be sending you this study material so this is uh, just collaborated or you can say combined through various sources and a very simple like you can say flow or a very simple language is being used over there okay so coming back so there's one alternative called region props in region props it works on area so we just what property we exploit is that definitely these things whatever is the fingerprint marks will have area greater than some value right and these dots they have a very less area let us suppose that these dots are 80 pixel approximately right if they're 80 pixel i can say that okay let's do origin uh, props and wherever the area is less than 85 or something remove it after i remove it i'll get the same result definitely so these are just the ways to approach the problem that is what happens in our even practical or industry oriented work that you don't fix yourself to one thing right if you're a c plus plus programmer you just know that what we do like if you're going for a search it's totally our option we can go for a linear search we can go for a binary search if you're doing sorting you can go for bubble sort radix sort count sort any sort right so that's totally upon us but region props is not a part of MIP, but one of the alternative what how the task can be achieved. So whenever you study anything, don't restrict yourself to one method. Always think of alternatives so that you know that it's not that this thing is or this thing can be just solved by this method, right? So what are we going to do in the upcoming lectures? So this was just the introduction i'll be telling you about further other things and uh, but this is for now for the introduction lecture so what are we going to do in the next lectures are something called a structuring element which is the core of mip hit and fit erosion dilation opening closing and chain codes and after this we'll be closing this lecture sequence and i hope you have a great day Thank you so much and for any doubts or queries feel free to just put the email concepts in depth and easy.com sorry at the rate of gmail.com thank you so much and have a great day